Yeah. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Todd Stewart here. I got my partner, Liz Trotter. Hello, Liz. Hello. It is Friday. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> things are getting better. Things have got to be getting better because I remember it wasn't that long ago. It was like Friday was just another day and it was just everything was a blur and it kind of feel like Friday today, you know? Yeah, it does. I agree. We've got some work to do tomorrow, but it's going to be that, you know, three hours worth of work and nine hours of time type work. Yeah. I, I do love that. Sunday, I'm going to not be working on Sunday. It's Mother's Day. And um, the thing about Mother's Day is it seems like this really awesome holiday for moms, but not until there aren't any other moms above you. Because as long as there are moms above you, it's a lot of work. I have multiple moms that I have to manage Mother's Day for. So it won't necessarily be a lot of fun for me. <laughs> It'll be work for moms. <laughs> so I won't be I won't be working on Sunday, but I'll be spending mom time. You know, I'm kind of to the point now where I got a pass. There was a time when I was like hurting kids and trying to get them to kind of get their act together to yeah. you know they're they're all enough where they're on their own now. If they don't get it right, you know, it's like <laughs> <laughs> you guys should have learned better by now. Mom's mad at you, <laughs> not yeah. me. I'm like, off the hook. We raised them together, Janice. We we got to we got to show the ownership <laughs> on this. <laughs> Why didn't you teach them to celebrate Mother's Day better? <laughs> All right, I am trying to get up on here because you know I have to have it on my phone to be able to respond. And I, oh. Look, this time it actually is coming up silent. Yay, for a change. Oh, boy. Hey, I don't see anybody on here. Oh, no, I see a couple of people. Yeah, I feel. Yeah, I only see three, though. There's Leslie. Hey, Leslie. Mm -hmm. uh, I see Debbie on there. Hey, Debbie. Yeah. Not, nope, you're not the only one. Not anymore, Debbie. But hi. While we're waiting to get started, I'll show something here just uh as a, as a warm up, when the whole you know COVID relief litig not litigation laws were being passed, one of the things that uh, the IRS did was extend the tax filing deadline from April fifteenth to July fifteenth, and that's currently the law now. But there's legislation being considered to push it out. They're, they're looking at several different dates, either September, October, or maybe as far out as December, which is really, really awesome because you can file on a, on a normal year. If you don't file your taxes by the 15th of April, you can file an extension to file your taxes. But any monies you owe needs to, to be in the hands of the IRS by then. If not, they start charging you some penalties and, and some interest. And it's not wacky expensive, but it's really best to at least pay your prior year taxes by the 15th is going to cost you more. Well, you got to the 15th at the moment to pay 2019 taxes. And it looks like that you might have till September, October, maybe December. They haven't figured it out yet. But if you haven't paid all of your 2019 taxes, you don't, you don't need to rush to do it. And, you know, there's a lot of different schools of thought on that, but, I'd rather hold on to the money and and you know make a, a fraction percent interest on it as opposed to give it uh, give it to the government any sooner than I have to. I'm not even concerned about making any money on it. I just want to hold on to it as long as I can because I just I'm still not of the mindset that I know where things are going to be in six months. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like holding on to everything that I can. Why pay today? Why pay today what you can pay tomorrow? Because you're 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 yeah. right. You know, say they push it out to September, they might do something different in September. And you know, for the people who paid early, they're like, ah, you know, I shouldn't have. Paid I, ha that I had the opportunity. Just just, just <laughs> hang in there and wait and see what happens. Do you see this, Lucia? She's making a joke. Hi, sorry, I'm late today. <laughs> You're, <laughs> you're actually earlier than we normally are, right? But 
look at how good we're doing. I, uh, Leslie, I know that you will appreciate that we were on mm -hmm. time today within that two minute window. And we did really good yesterday, an hour and one minute. Tom, I got to give you props. I know it's not easy for you, which is funny because I think that most people that know the two of us would think that I'm the one that is, is not timely and that you are the very timely one, but no, <laughs> not so much. It's it's just yeah. There's a there's a lot of uh, misconceptions, I guess. Yeah. But we had some. Right. We, we had the opportunity to have a technical difficulty today that would have made us late, but we were covered in the last minute. Yeah, I, and well, I, we kind of pulled that out, skin of the teeth. But I was still talking while Tom had already point pushed the lag button. He's like, hurry up, I already hit the button. I like smile, fake. <laughs> Uh, okay, it has not gone unnoticed. Thank you, Leslie. I know she really does appreciate it too. All right, so what do you guys want to talk about? We are remind. I'm reminding you that we would like to get questions in earlier. Um, I think Tom's going to fill us in on. Um, we had talked about tools um, when we're going to be having that conversation and get your questions in early. We didn't have any left over from yesterday. That that strategy seemed to work really well. Uh, and then we'll go from there. Uh, Debbie, I applied for PPP yesterday morning. They contacted me in the afternoon and said it is going to be uh, underwriting already. You shouldn't be telling people that. I mean, I'm afraid that people are going to be mad at you. <laughs> I'm not. Been asking you for a loan. Yeah, that's crazy. I love. It. Who did you apply through, Debbie? Um, how long does it take to be funded once it goes to underwriting? And she'd like to hear ideas on how to use her PPP money. Schema versus Fogger, ugh, okay. We can talk about that too. Um, so we're in pain, home sick, we're back in December. They probably have the virus on it where I think I picked up something. But we're all well now, I hope. Yep, good, I hope for your sake too. Um, yeah, tell us where you applied for your money, Debbie. I think, oh, Kitsap Credit Union. All right, you guys heard that, but that's here in Washington, so sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, but I do love that. Okay, ways to use PPP money. I think that is something that has been a perpetual interest to people. Um, we want to talk a little bit about that, Tom, some different ways. Is it? Oh, actually, let's answer this question first, Tom, if you don't mind. Leslie wants to know, is equipment in the 25% of the PPP? Because that's going to probably not. It depends what yeah. it is. Yeah, it would have to be like normal, normal operating stuff. Now, if you had any EIDL funds, I think that you're good there, like vacuum cleaners and stuff like that. But for the PPP, I wouldn't do that. I would save that for for rent, for um, you know, payroll primarily for for payroll. For the 75%, yeah, and up to 25, it's up to 25%, right, for the other, and they were really clear, that's one area that I feel like they were pretty clear about, you know, your your rent, your um, utilities, your interest on previous, well, you have some interest on some previous stuff, but it was you want me to pull the, I can pull the um, instructions up real quick. Because sounds good. It's so guys, um, everybody be thinking about their ways that they're spending their PPP money. Or you guys can even throw in just one idea. We'll talk about in that in a few minutes. We'll hit some of these other things first. Don't worry, Debbie. I, I wrote it down so that it doesn't get dropped. I want to give everybody a chance to uh, start brainstorming on this. What you got there, Tom? This is the uh, cabbage article. The ultimate. This is called, called the ultimate guide to uh, paycheck protection program loans. I actually love this. This is a great one. Yeah. Is it eligible? Who's eligible? How to apply? Applying. I should know where this is by now. Come on. A lot of questions here. Repayment. Eligible expenses. Right there, yeah. 
business related interest payments on mortgage other debt obligations so what are debt obligations tom it's money you owe somebody it could be anywhere oh. from a, a credit line to car notes to, uh mortgage on, a, on 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 your building so credit card payments if all of the business if it's business uh, expenses on the card i would say that's a debt obligation yes Somebody asked me about that earlier. So, okay. So, uh, but only the interest. Correct. Yep. Utilities are eligible. Rent is eligible. And they get into payroll costs. And this gets kind of tricky. Salaries, wages, commissions, um, benefits count, state and local taxes count. Um, following payroll costs are excluded compensation of an employee whose principal place of residence is out of the United States compensation of an individual employee in excess of a hundred thousand oh, dollars. I want to talk about that real quick. This is really important. This came up today in my mastermind accountability group. So if you are hiring somebody, putting somebody on your payroll, like, uh, for example, I put my website developer on my payroll. I can't pay him $2,000 a week for eight weeks. If I was to do that, would put him over the $100,000 amount. So make sure that you keep that number below $1,900 per week, anybody that you put on your payroll. All right, go ahead, Tom. I just wanted to point that out because two people I know had somebody on their payroll for two grand a week. Mm -mm. No. You got to take 100,000 and divide it by uh, 52, and the number comes up to be 1,900 and change. I don't okay. know. But yeah. 1,900 is a, is a safe safe number for that. Uh, employment, the federal employment taxes, uh, sick leave, contractor pay, payroll reimbursements. Workers' comp is the question that keeps coming up, and workers' comp is not uh, counted as a PPP expense but you know a lot of a lot of the stuff you're gonna have to pay it anyway so you know you're not gonna make a decision to, to hire somebody or not hire somebody based on that but uh, primarily you're really talking about you know utilities space costs you can cover interest and if you're gonna put a contractor on the, on your payroll and try to get like web development stuff like that you know what what Liz said is really important don't uh, Pay them more than than nineteen hundred dollars a week, or nineteen thirty two, or whatever the number is. Yeah, I, I'm just sticking with nineteen hundred or less to be safe. Uh, so, Leslie, you were talking about it's hard to meet um, rent utilities being twenty five percent. If you consider that uh, percentage of the uh, not percentage the um, interest on other debt, you might be able to get up there a little bit quicker, depending on who you are. Um, um, but then also keep in mind that it's maximum of 25%. You don't have to spend the whole 25%. And it's a minimum of 75% on the payroll. So you can spend more of the money than 75% on the payroll. You can, you can spend 100% on payroll. You don't yeah, have you don't to have spend. to spend any on rent. You don't have to spend any on anything. You could spend it how you want. So, but you can spend it on rent. But if you can get to the point where your, your headcount numbers are getting you close to having the whole thing forgiven, the idea of hiring some extra help to do marketing or website development or some of that stuff for a period of time might not be a bad way to use those extra funds. And you're using it as payroll, but it's payroll that you normally wouldn't have. So, and that is different than the payroll that you normally would have that that would be generating revenue, right? Because that money is sort of growing in your account now, but still it's 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 an investment. That's an investment. So and, and it's an investment that the government is funding. <laughs> I love that. Well, All right, we have Leslie's bummed that she doesn't have any debt. Well I know. Oh, poor Les. Come here. Let me let me yeah. let me pack back for you, Leslie. Deb Deborah says the whole PPP thing is scary. 
And oh, I've heard a lot of people say that. You know, it, it can be. I mean, you 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 don't want to spend the money in ways that you're not supposed to spend it. But it is a, a loan, and the interest rate is like one percent. And you know, honestly, if you use it in the way that's intended to be used, and you don't have to pay it back until till two two years. I mean, I guess we start we start paying it back in six months. Is that right? Yeah, six months. Right. But if something happens and you can't pay it back, think about this. The government loaned you that money so you could create jobs, right, and hire people. If you needed extra help, longer terms, whatever, they're not going to – what are they going to do? Shut you down so you have to fire all the people that they gave you that money for to begin with? And I'm telling you this not to just go ahead and do whatever you want with the money. You do need to be scared, but if it helps you sleep a little bit better – and I could – you know. Who knows? I could be completely wrong, but I don't think that the government is going to be, you know, if you if you need them to work with you, what choice do they have but to work with you? They're not going to they're going to make you fire the people that they gave you the money to keep working in the first place. And, and I'm going to go a step further. You don't need to be afraid. There is nothing to be afraid of. Uh, fear is just just your your subconscious mind unsure doesn't know and so it's grasping onto fear because it doesn't have anything else solid to grasp onto but we're trying to give you something to solid to grasp onto this is a great thing that is going to help your business and it's not going to hurt your business so follow the law we're helping you. We're helping guide you to where to go. Don't do it. Don't do anything stupid like go out and buy a Ferrari. We keep saying, right? Just do what you're supposed to be doing, and this is going to help you. Uh, okay, we do have a couple of questions here. Debbie asks a question here, and she says not to beat a dead horse. This isn't beating a dead horse at all, Debbie. Um, so she received her PPP on April 13th. Can I take payroll for the payroll on April 17th out of it? Yeah, the, 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 the payrolls that go out on the 17th are one of the, is the first pay period that's actually counting in your eight week period. The clock starts the instance that, that you get the money. So even though, even though the checks that go out on the 17th that are paying for work that happen prior to you getting the money, the government really doesn't care about that. That first week is 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 part of part of the eight week period. That seventeenth is the first of eight pay pay periods. I think the part that is giving people little glitches is is it money's earned in that eight week period or money's paid out in that eight week period? Those buddies that are going out paid out is the money that's going out of your bank account, out okay, of your so out of your helpful. PPP funds to be specific. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of your PPP funds. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I hope that helps with that, Debbie. Um, Donna wants to know, where can we find that form? I'm not sure what form you're talking about. Donna, hit us up with that again. Um, uh, Donna Garman, $1.923. We are giving employees hazard pay. Okay, she's giving hazard pay, $1.92, it looks like. I'm guessing that's for each hour that people work. So there's an idea, you guys, how people are spending PPP money. Um, she's giving hazard pay of $1.92. Uh, Greg, I would think that you could use your profits that should be higher than normal to pay for the expenses not covered by the PPP. Yeah, I, I think that that's what most people are, are thinking to do. And um, typical salaries are 40 to 50% of your expenses. Right. Most of the time, uh, everybody's uh, payroll costs are going to be 50 percent give or take. If you're down in the 40 percent, yay. If you're at the 60 percent, well, here's your opportunity to get that lower. <laughs> not not today, but you're going to, going to be able to you got eight weeks to kind of fix those processes and and create new systems that get that payroll percent to revenue down just a little bit. Uh, yeah, thanks for that, though, Greg. That That's super helpful. Um, Tom, would you post that cabbage link? Did you post it? Yeah. The, the list of questions? Oh, yeah, there it is right below there. Sorry. My, my mistake, Tom. No. 
Uh, Lu Lucia wants to know, is unemployment covered? Not, not exactly sure what she means by covered, Tom. Do you know what she means? Mm, no. I mean, we as employers pay, I guess, the unemployment insurance, the state, maybe a little bit to um, the federal. And it said state and local taxes can be included in the PPP. So, you know, I, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not 100% sure. But this falls in the category of you're going to hire people. And if you have to pay the, un, I mean, you, if you're paying the unemployment part, you're going to pay it anyway. So it's not really, you will know at the end of this, when you're squaring up with the bank and going through all of the math, they will be a lot more, uh, I guess, prescriptive in terms of what is and isn't allowed. Honestly, at this point, I don't think there's any clear understanding of, of, of some of these details. Some of this we're not going to know until we get there. But just because we don't know doesn't mean that we have to be afraid of it. We don't want to assume that it's going to go against us. It, the smarter thinking right now is that it's going to be for the business because that is what's been shown to us so far is that the government is really working for small businesses right now. So it wouldn't make sense for them to go back on that and undo everything that they've done. Yeah, I absolutely right. And in a relative sense, your, your glass is a lot more full than it is empty because, you know, the unemployment, state unemployment is just a little fraction of the overall payroll cost. So the benefit you're getting from, you know, the PPP monies and having a chunk of that being forgiven for, for, the, for the salaries is, you know, far outweighs any little, you know, trailing numbers that you might have to, to pay for yourself. Uh, Amelia wants to know, can we use PPP for new hires? So um, maybe not for the hiring costs, like the ads and stuff like that, mm -hmm. Amelia, right? No. Um, but, but for, the, for the salaries of people that you hire, yeah. yes. Absolutely. Please do. That's exactly what's intended. And they would like you to hire as many people as you can. Like one of the things everybody's talking about right now is we got to get our numbers up to what they were during one of those two time frames. But the government would love you to hire twice as many people. If you could get twice as many people working for for the same amount of money they were working before, that would be awesome for the government. Right? Remember, part of what they're trying to do here is um, decrease that unemployment. Right? They want to get people employed. So absolutely, that that's a great use of your funds. Uh, just, just to put it in perspective, if you can see this graph, oops, going all the way back to 1940, okay, these, these are the monthly unemployment numbers, the number of job losses, excuse me. Unemployment claims and job losses are a little bit different because the unemployment claims are like over 30 million, but people who are like doing the whole partial unemployment, job share, all of that stuff, those are unemployment claims too. Whereas if it's a job loss, you're just flat out, you don't have any job at all. Look at this number trailing around, you know, sometimes when it's bad, a couple hundred thousand, maybe even pushing a million. You see this number that just like drops off of a cliff. Over 20 million people lost their jobs in April compared to, you know, these numbers here. That's that's 20 times higher than what you've seen going all the way back to before World War II. Is that crazy? And, and, it, and it's such a drastic difference that that's just, again, what, what kind of a time is this in history, Tom? This goes all the way back to 1940. But what's the key phrase that you have? Oh, this is an unprecedented. Gee whiz, <laughs> softball. This is an unprecedented event. We say it every day, and you see this number here compared to going all the way back uh, before any of us were born. Right? Yeah. Isn't this crazy? So 
in, 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 in you know, relation to what you were just saying, Liz, the government really, really wants us to hire people because this number is 20 times worse than what we've ever seen in, in, in our lifetime. And the government doesn't really know how they're going to deal with this either yet, you guys. It, if you think they do, of course, they don't. They, it's unprecedented. They're trying to figure this out, too. And you guys know running your own businesses. How is it for you when you have an emergency that pops up and you have to get an answer today? Is that when you get your best response? <laughs> Maybe not. Right? You, you throw it out there, you do you respond, you do what you can, the best you have, and then you tweak, right? And you make it better and better. But you're still trying to solve that original problem, which is what the government's doing. They're throwing money at it, trying to fix whatever they can, but they got a problem they're trying to fix. So we, we just keep in mind that they're trying. We're part of the solution. We're not part of the problem. So knowing that we're part of the solution helps us to have some confidence that the government is working with us and they're not going to be trying to hurt us somewhere down the line. Yeah, this is kind of the first time in, 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 in my experience of being in business where it's almost like the government needs us. You know, before it was just kind of like, you know, are they even really trying to help us? So many times it's like, you know, how can, how, you know, why are they making this so hard? All the yeah, rules, especially in California. Yeah, I've, I've got all these extra reports. I got. I mean, just just we could go back over the years. No point in that. It's Friday afternoon. I'm feeling pretty good right now. I don't want to run. <laughs> but, uh, this is this is just this is a, a new paradigm. I'll say it again. It's unprecedented. Yeah, totally. Uh, so we have a couple of things here. Um, Ginger is saying that Blue Skies posted a really good loan forgiveness calculator spreadsheet in several groups. Awesome. You guys go and look for that. We also, Tom, we have some tools that we're going to be presenting next week, I believe, right? Do we have because, a, do we, is it, can we say that we have a special guest, guest lined up on Monday? Are we getting over our skis too far? Or? I don't have my guest lined up yet. I haven't talked oh. to him remember. Okay. But yours, isn't yours coming? Yeah, um, Matt Ricketts is, is going to come join us next week. Um, don't know exactly what day yet. We're going to have we're going to have a guest on Monday. Well, at least that's our, our, our objective. Um, yeah. Matt wants to share with us or we want Matt to share with us um, how to build a job form to do a survey for for your employees, basically asking them what their intent is to come back to work. If you're still starting up and if you still have, have employees out, and it's, it's a non-threatening way to get some positive confirmation from them as to what their intent is. Because we shared yesterday that part of the new rules that are coming out on PPP, if you offer one of your former employees their job back and if they don't take it, then you can still count their headcount as, as, as like an employee to the positive on your PPP calculation. They don't want you going out and just hiring people for the sake of hiring people, even though they want you to hire people. I mean, it's kind of crazy. I mean, they're making it easy for us. I say that and it's like, they're just helping us. Yeah. I love my government. And, and part of the problem is we're so not used to it that we're wary. We're like, yeah. what are they up to? Yeah, you know, <laughs> we don't trust it. You know, I'm 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 from the government, and I'm here to help you with something that you never really wanted to hear because you never really believed that they were there to help you. But so it's hard; it's hard to get your mind wrapped around this. It, it is, and even though uh, I, I I fall into the trap too, I think we all do. We're like, yes, this is great, this is great, and then all of a sudden something will happen, and you start going down that old thinking again. It's like, yeah, but what if? What if? No, nope, stop. <laughs> Got to get back on track again. Uh, so Greg is saying, Greg Stater is saying, hey, Greg, um, a Paychex is giving us the reports that will tell us that a dollar amount that, they, that he can use toward the PPP. And he likes having them as his sanity check. I know Gusto is doing the same thing. If you're using a payroll processing company, you're probably getting a lot of these tools. Take advantage, y'all. These tools are amazing. They're going to make your life a whole lot easier. Uh, let's see. Leslie wants to know, 
do you get the grant for the portion you use if you don't use it all? What if I can't use it all, but most of it? For the amount that you actually spend over that eight week period, your, 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 your window, a percentage of that gets treated as a grant. And this is a math that, that we'll go into next week once we have a spreadsheet calculator to, to, to share with you. But basically it's a prorated portion of, you know, what was your, your FTE for some time period. And there's a couple of different look back periods you can go to, but there's a number that you need to hit. And whatever percentage of that number you hit determines the percentage of the PPP money that you don't have to pay back. Or there's, no, another, no. or there's another way, depending on what your headcount is on June 30th. So I think it's there, there's a couple of different ways that they they, 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 they calculate that. They're, making, they're, they're giving you options in terms of picking different periods to come up with the number that you need to hit. So you can get the smallest number of FTEs that, that, that you can get. And then they're making it easier to hit that number because it can be uh, average number over the eight week period, or it could be just the solid number on the 30th of June, right? Yeah. So, but we do have to address one thing. So today, one of the issues that came up in um, the mastermind accountability groups was people did not really understand how to, um, how to figure out what an FTE is. So do we have a number, a solid number yet? Is um, 30 hours, 32 hours, 35 hours, 40 hours? The number that I've been told is 30. Um, 30 is um, the Affordable Care Act number, but I don't know. Kyle told me it was 30. And okay, well, you know, if Kyle doesn't normally say things if there isn't some basis in fact. So... I would feel confident with the 30 number. We are, um, in, um, on Monday, we have an HR expert coming in. So um, hopefully she'll be able to give us this number from, be able to pull it from somewhere. And when you say we, not on oh, our Facebook, but. Oh, sorry, in my, in my MMA group. Yeah, we have an HR expert coming in. So there, um, hopefully we'll get some answers from her on Monday about this exact number looks like it might be 30, but if you could still, Tom, explain, I don't even know if you have a way to maybe put that in writing because this has been a hard concept for people to grasp. If we can, we have, we have a guest that we're working on for next week and we, we, we have it pretty, we're pretty confident that we're going to make it happen. We just don't know exactly what day yet. That's built a pretty awesome spreadsheet workbook calculator that uh, he'll basically walk us from soup. There are a lot of calculators out there, but he built his own. So not only can we look at the calculator, but he can walk us through all of the steps. And I don't know. We and explain what an FTE is. So stay tuned. Make sure that you're on next week on Monday because um, it's an FTE number is not the same number as how many employees you had on. You can't just count the number of people that you gave paychecks to. And that, that's not the number. No. Right? So, so we'll we'll help you with that. Um, so Richard is saying, Tom, that the current unemployment rate is the same as the Great Depression. Do you know what he means by that? Well, the number, the, the unemployment rate back then, I think, was somewhere around 15, maybe 16 percent. I don't think that we're quite there. I think the, un, the unemployment rate is four, somewhere between 14 and 15 percent right now yeah. i can pull that up um close it, enough though yeah, right? it's, it's, it's close <laughs> enough, as they say it's close enough for government work right yeah um uh, he'll pull that up while, while you're pulling that up um bridget's question is what if one person quits after coming back after the layoff right they were laid off closed down for a while they come back and then one person quits, they probably won't count towards your head count at the end of PPP. No, they won't. If they're not there, on the June 30th is the date that you count the people, the, the FTEs, not the people, the FTEs. So 
you will have to make sure that you have replaced any any people headcount FTEs again that that um, leave or didn't come back or however whatever you do with that. But by June thirtieth, that's the date right now, and we 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 know that June thirtieth is the date. Uh, that's been really clearly written multiple times, but the piece we don't know is. Is there an extended period of time after June 30th that you have to keep this headcount? That's a little gray still, uh, but clear. It's very clear that June 30th you need to have that correct FTE number at least that minimum meet that minimum um, threshold. Here, uh, certified public accounting group. So I guess this is credible. How are FTEs computed? Guidance has not yet been provided <laughs> with respect to defining it under the CARES Act. Uh, they do talk about the 30 hours per week, so that's here. So it is not under the but the, the IRS code, right? Yes. Okay. It's the, it's the CARES Act section. So this is actually the part of the, 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 the CARES Act. It says 30 hours a week, but the actual uh code that, that the actual details that, that go behind that that say this is how we're going to calculate that setting to this that the guidance hasn't hasn't been provided but, but read that last that last line that last sentence tom yeah uh, employees until, working. no until guidance is received oh. that one you see i'll read it until guidance is received otherwise we suggest using the computation to determine the FTEs for those employees who work fewer than 30 hours per week. Employees working at least 30 hours per week are counted as full-time employees. So they're just suggesting this until there's more guidance. <laughs> they're not telling you what, they're, they're, they're even saying, we don't know. Here, here's our best suggestion today. And this is, this, you know, these are CPAs. It's their job to know this, but they can't, without guidance, it was the same thing. It was the same thing when the PPP funds are, were supposed to, they started taking the applications and it was such a mess. The banks didn't have guidance. They didn't know what they were supposed to do. They didn't know what the rules were. And these were... Yeah. So guidance is a fancy, fancy term for rules. There, we don't know that the rules haven't been written yet. So we're trying to answer questions that 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 haven't been answered by the people who are going to be creating the answer. And here's the thing that one of the again today uh, we had a long MMA meeting today. You guys, our mastermind accountability group it was a long one. That's why I keep bringing up a lot of stuff, and we talked a lot about this stuff. But again, one of the people in that group today said something that I just thought was so smart. She's like, I don't even care. I'm going to talk to my banker. My banker is the one that's deciding what gets approved or not. So I want to make sure that I'm on the same page as my banker. I was like, yeah, that does matter. Because the banker is going to have the best information because they really need to make sure that whatever they approve that the SBA agrees with because they don't want to come in back on them. So if you're in alignment with your banker, that seems pretty freaking safe to me. They're not going to be taking a whole heck of a lot of chances of losing that money. I was like, yeah, that makes sense, right? It does. Some of this stuff though, isn't worth worrying about right now in terms of, you know, yeah. what, what, are these smaller costs are included or not included? Because you know you're going to if you if you're going to be spending the money anyway, you're going to be spending the money anyway. And at the end, if you can include it, you can. And if you can't, you don't. Um, it's a good idea to know how the FTEs are calculated, and you know because if you're only missing getting full relief by just a little bit, if you can hire that one extra person, that might get you you know. It might save you, you know, some 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 real money. So we really yeah. need to understand that. But um, but I don't know, Tom. I'm going to have to argue that one with you because if it's somebody like me 
that I'm paying my employees to do stuff that I might not be doing, that I would not be doing if, if it wasn't for the PPP. You know, I'm paying them to do things that I wouldn't be paying them for otherwise. So I do need to know some of this stuff. That's what I'm saying. For, for the, that's what I'm saying. Some stuff oh. I do want to know. How the, how the FTE calculation is done, that's worth worth knowing. Okay. Yeah. I, I think maybe I misunderstood that. Yeah. Sorry. Fretting over, you know, does unemployment tax count or not? Oh, oh yeah. You're yeah. gonna pay it anyway. So yeah. if it is, great. And if not, don't don't be spending money on stuff that you wouldn't be spending it on otherwise, unless it's payroll, because you know that's gonna get written off. And you know, are you gonna be able to are you gonna be able to write off 80% of it or 70% of it or 60% of it or hundred percent of it? That we don't know, but if it's 60%, that's still a deal, right? Yeah, no matter how much of it is written off, it's it's a win. So uh, I, yeah, I think people get caught in that weird loop of, yeah, but what if they don't, don't forgive all the money? It was still free hmm. money. All of it was free. So it's only a little bit of free money is still good. It's kind of like buffet bar mentality. It's all you can eat. So I need to, you know, stick food in my pocket if I have to. I want to, you know, <laughs> eat Ew. I'm not going to a buffet with Tom, y'all. <laughs> I don't think that you'll be going to a buffet again in a long, long time, Liz, if ever. I, and you know how much I love buffets, Tom. So that's just like killing my yep. soul. Cece, Cece's business model is. I uh, love buffets. All right, so um, uh, Ginger has a question, and let's see, uh, or not, uh, I'm sorry, Leslie has a question. She's just clarifying. Um, so if she gets 55000 but she only gives out 54000 pays out $54,000 in payroll, um, will she have to pay the $1,000 back? Over the course of 18 months, yeah, I mean, I guess oh, it's years. Well, it's two years. Is the, But is the two years start from the day you get the money and you don't have to make your first payment until six months? So is it like a year and a half? Year and a half from when you have to start making the payments. But right. from the time you get it, you got two years. So, yeah. you know, if you haven't spent it in eight weeks, you have that thousand dollars. Well, you've got, you know, a 18 two months. years minus eight weeks to yeah. pay it. That's true. It's only eight weeks. Why am I thinking six only months? Only eight weeks. Yeah. And it's one percent interest, <laughs> and, and you can pay and you can pay it back all at one time if you want. And I guess the other part you would have to pay back. Say you spent fifty four thousand on payroll and other you know countable PPP expenses. If your headcount met the uh, you know the uh, FTE number a hundred percent, then you don't have to pay any of that back. Well, but say, you still have to pay the thousand. You still have to pay the thousand back. Yeah. But say the ratio comes out to be 90%. So the other 10% you would have to pay back. So it would be the thousand plus maybe 5,400 in this case. But again, you're paying it back over two years minus, you know, the eight weeks. And that don't let that scare you. Don't let that scare you because don't forget that you weren't paying any money out in payroll for the last eight weeks. So all that money has accumulated in your account. Go ahead, Tom. Let's do that math because that's that's really, oh gosh, that's really important to understand. Because that's what's scary people. They're forgetting that that money is going into their account. To, to use your example, Leslie, just pretend that 50000 of that money that you spent was going to salaries to your cleaning technicians, your cleaning professionals for cleaning homes that you would have been paying them anyway under normal circumstances. Assume that you've got a, you know, a payroll to revenue number of 50%, just to make the math easy, that would mean that you generated $100,000 in revenue, house cleaning revenue off of that $50,000. So you got $100,000 in the bank that you made off of that $50,000 that you've got no real expenses against because the government paid for your, your, your payroll. For well, that. No, you got the other 50%, right? Because 50% is payroll. So the other, you still have the expenses, that 50% of that. 
that are going to go out. Well, the government that's gave you the 50%, though. So really, you've got... They only paid the payroll part. They only paid the 50% of the payroll. They didn't pay the other 50%. There was no 50, other 50%. The customers paid you $100,000, and you paid $50,000 to... Under normal circumstances, customers, you can't do $100,000 worth of cleaning. Out of that 100000 you would get 50000 to your cleaners, and you've got fifty to cover other expenses. That's what I'm saying. You still have to pay those other expenses. Right, but... So you still have to pay that. Small, but you've got that fifty thousand dollars. You should you should have you should have a hundred thousand dollars in the bank is is what I'm 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 saying. It so so to pay off that four thousand that five thousand dollars plus the other thousand dollars over eighteen months, you can pay it off day one if you want. I mean, it's, it's that, that's a walk in the park. We used to do we used to do trading under the Welfare to Work Act. Now I'm telling you, this was like late '90s type stuff, and basically we got grants. Before some of you were born. Yes, but we got grants to basically train people, and they were cleaning homes and generating revenue for us over a six week period. And the payroll, their their salaries were paid by the government. So every dollar that the customers paid us was like just money in the bank and there was no real expense going against it. And that's what you've got here for this eight week period. You're going to make a ton. You're going to make, if you're able to clean some homes with this, you're going to make a ton of money regardless. Yeah. That's the trick y'all. You need to, if you can get money coming in, you know, if you can get revenue on the books, legitimate revenue on the books and you have people working and earning money while this is happening, oh, that's the dream. Get as many of your customers back as you can. And if you can't get your old customers back, get new customers. But the more money you actually have coming in, the better. Now, a way to spend it is still all of the other things that we're talking about, right? Putting other people on the payroll, things that you might not normally spend it on. Oh, but the dream is actually bringing revenue in and paying people to, to do that. That's where the, that's where the big win is. Oh, ah, that's exciting right there. Okay. Uh, so now Ginger it heard this, Tom, can you give us a little clarification here? She says what she's been reading is that the FTE is calculated by averaging the FTE over the eight week period, not the number on June 30th. I've heard that as well. I had a discussion with Kyle about that today, but he was telling me that it was like an either or and the June 30th date mattered as well. And it could be the greater of either one of those. I don't know for sure if that's true or not though. I'll ask my HR expert on Monday. There is, there's definitely uh a treat there's there's definitely some 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 stuff written about the average over the eight week period to get your your ft te calculation i've seen that okay so we'll have some better info okay um hey tom looks like we're out of questions real quick and it's 250 maybe you could tell a little bit about um the programs uh, I just got hit up today by some hey, you know what I just realized you know who's not on here and Denise's not on here. Hey Denise, if you're on here, say hi. I haven't seen you yet today. Um anyway, um uh, we have a couple of programs. Um I had a couple of people reach out to me today, say that they couldn't get into the program. Uh but I think they might have been trying to come to the um, the COVID-19. Were there any glitches in the program today, Tom? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Two ways you can enroll. You can bulk enroll over here. You can enroll just as one person and take the class immediately. We do a bulk enroll. It takes us about a day to get your names all, all uploaded. But um, we got people that, that are, you know, going back out in the field and cleaning. This is a pretty you know, good program. It's a good, it's, a really, it's an awesome program. Actually, it's good information for people to have cleaning in a COVID-19 world. And it's focused just that COVID-19. Um, it gets into, you know, what the, what the virus is and precautions you need to take to keep yourself safe and to uh, 
properly sanitize and disinfect a home and, and various uh, nuances of the cleaning procedure, like how to handle bed linens, things like that. It talks a lot about PPE and how to put it on and take it off. It's, uh, it's like a three hour program and it's a certification uh, for completion at, at the end when you, when you take a test. Um, we've had, we had a lot of people take this class, a lot of people. So this is something I wanted to tell you guys. We've had hundreds and hundreds of people take this class. I won't, how, how would it be for you guys if you um, went out and cleaned hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of homes? You would expect at least one or two dissatisfied clients, at least a couple of comments about how things weren't exactly what they were hoping for, et cetera. We have gotten zero people tell us that this content was not worth the money. Not one, not one, zero people. This, one this content is hard, hard. Go ahead. I had one person tell us that the uh, certificate of completion should have been mailed hard copy as opposed to digitally downloaded. But absolutely zero uh, uh, comments about um, dis oh. un unsatisfied with the content. The class is yeah. awesome. Yeah. So I think it's okay too, but you know, it's. The certificate you printed out yourself. And my recommendation is after having um, heard that, I was like, oh, you know, I hadn't really thought about that. But get yourself some cardstock, maybe printed on cardstock. Uh, not, not cardstock, photo stock. You know, I um, had Mindy actually um, try, try printing uh, one on photo stock and it does look better. So uh, you might try that if you're trying to get a better, uh, a better looking uh, certificate. All right, um, this is the PHC program. Yeah, and this is designed uh, for cleaning professionals, and this is a much broader treatment of what a house cleaning professional needs to know to, to do their job and, and to transcend, to go from just having a job to actually understanding the whys behind, you know, the, the best practices so, you know, they can make good decisions on, how to clean certain surfaces and understand the different types of soils and how they react to different types of chemicals and understand all the different types of pathogens that you run into in a cleaning environment. But we do this in a way where we're talking about germs and dirt and things that, you know, we're, we're making, we're making this friendly and just we're designing it for technicians because this, those are the folks that, that, that need the information, the cleaning professionals. It's a, Roughly an eight-hour course. It's seven classes, and there's a uh, exam at the end. We've launched the first class last Wednesday. The other six are going to be rolled out over the course of the month of May. Um, so the whole thing will be out there by by the end of the month. Uh, Liz is 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 helping us with this. We've got Matt Ricketts is helping. Um, Joe Walsh, Janice. Uh, my, my wife, which every once in a while I'm able to twist her arm to get on one of these. She, uh, this is pretty much her full-time gig. Um, actually, she built most of this program years ago when we just never got the last, you know, 30% of it done. And, and when COVID broke out, it was like, you know what, we really need to fit, finish that and get it out there because now is, is, is when it's needed. So it's, it's kind of like an abridged version of HCT, I guess. For, for, for cleaning technicians, easily accessible, affordable. I, it's there, There's a couple of things better about it than HCT though. Um, not to say anything disparaging against HCT. Love the HCT program, okay? Not trying to disparage that at all. Um, sent my people through it, et cetera. Um, but this program is definitely designed uh, more closely with the house cleaning technicians uh, desire for knowledge, need for knowledge, uh, interest. Um, I, I definitely believe that it's more uh, engaging material. And I believe that this is more the information that you want your professional house cleaners to have. There's more of that information in here. And it's presented in a way where the um, your professional house cleaners are going to want the information too and feel more engaged with it. We're, we are putting a lot of emphasis on 
uh, when as we have gone through the different areas. I don't think that they'll care about that. I, I don't think that'll be important. Let's give that a very small blurb. They will care about this. Let's give that more focus. So the every section is going through that, that process of that editing process for the house cleaning mm -hmm. professional. When, when we wrote the HCT program and the manual, we called it the HCT manual, but by the time we were done, it was apparent that we wrote it for cleaning business owners. And that wasn't, you know, it just, it just, that's just the way it happened. And that's useful too. And it's needed, but you know, this is, this is really the best way to get this to, to the people that are cleaning homes every day. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So you go to modern cleaning, click on the uh, professional house cleaning, and you know basically it's just a, a shopping cart. And you can go here and you can add as, as many seats as you want. There's bulk pricing. The more you get, the uh, cheaper they are per seat. And um, yeah, we're we're doing it. People, we've had a lot of people sign up and have started to take this class as well. And I'm uh, I'm excited about that, you know, because you know, it's house cleaning needs to be more more than a job. It is a profession. There's a tremendous amount of trust that you know consumer place in us as cleaning business owners, and and we in essence and in, in, in our cleaning professionals and and you know our, our our clients do as well. And everything from they have the key to the house to they're being trusted that they aren't going to be you know damaging surfaces. They're being trusting that they're going to be you know taking, you know, harmful pathogens and, and reducing the presence to a level where they're making the home safe and all that's doable with the, with the right knowledge and the understanding why we're doing what it is that we're doing and why it's important and, and a commitment to developing the skills to get good at it. And this, this program is, is, is a big step in that journey. Uh, Leslie says she signed her crew up. Hey, Leslie, you have been in business a long time. I would love to hear what you think of the program. That would be wonderful. Uh, I, I already know what, I, or I believe I already know what you're going to think, but I, I would love to hear that from, from you. Uh, I, I know that you take the business seriously. You take the idea of professionalizing the industry seriously. So I, I would love to hear what you have to say. Uh, also, cleaning business today, Tom. We've yeah. got two and a half minutes. And subscribe here, and you go here, and do Corona. Oops, I do this every day. You think I'd be getting better at this, wouldn't you? I feel like you're pretty good at it. Downloads, and I'll copy and paste that here. And uh, we've got some new stuff here. You see this here that's not blue, it's black. That's because somebody forgot to actually put the link in there. So I'll have to talk to that somebody. That somebody was me, by the way. I, <laughs> uh, you would be finding it out if it was somebody else, y'all, just, just so I give you a little insight into how Tom works. This is the... Uh, Denise. I'll answer in a second, Denise. Go ahead, Tom. No, this is just this is the uh, cabbage document that we looked at. Uh, Here's information on the article we looked at the other day for uh, the steps you need to take to get credit for for PPP credits for for employees who decide they don't want to come back to work. It's all good stuff. Any any more questions, Liz? And um, Denise just wants to know: Is anyone getting personalized masks? I did. I ordered them with my logo on them. Um, I, gosh, I don't know that we can put that link on here. I think we'd probably overwhelm. I don't know. I'll find out. You might be able to give that link out. Otherwise hit me up um, personally, Denise, hit me up on Facebook messenger and I'll, I'll give that to you. Uh, okay. If you don't have any more questions, y'all will, we're going to let you out of here early, 45 seconds early on a Friday. You guys, uh, you know, take care of yourselves this weekend. It's okay to get a little bit of work done, but, you know, relax. Uh, Sunday's Mother's Day, right? Happy Mother's Day, Happy everybody. Happy Mother's Day, yeah. Uh, in, enjoy, be safe, and we'll uh, see you here Monday, 5 o'clock Eastern time.
Thank you. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye.